You know, I don't live in walking distance of a grocery store. The only grocery stores that you can go to where I live are on the highway or you have to get on the highway to get to them. They are literally separated from the common folk, the very poor, those who don't have cars, by this gigantic motorway that cannot be walked on, has no sidewalk. It's extremely dangerous to walk on it because people do not know how to drive and they drive very fast. But what there is within walking distance of me and many other people is the Dollar General store. And this is a store that you may not always be able to get to via sidewalk, but if you walk through some people's yards and walk on some other miscellaneous grass, you can generally get there no matter where you are because these are businesses that are literally modeled around going to communities that do not have a grocery store, usually with a lot of poor people that cannot get to the grocery store by car. And a lot of people do not have a car or at least easy access to a car. I know I haven't for a number of years now and because of apps like Uber or uh, grocery store delivery I've been basically saved but in general I have to walk to go get stuff and sometimes I have to walk in a really dangerous way to go get stuff and I don't intend on getting a driver's license anytime soon because I worry a lot about doing something impulsive and dangerous on the road, as well as like my general ineptitude with large mechanical things. But worry not, because the dollar store is there. And I've sort of learned to find it comfy over time, like a comforting institution, because they all look exactly the same when you go inside. They all have people wearing the exact same kind of uniforms. And if you're going there on a regular basis, you're pretty much always seeing the same people because it seems like there's not really a high turnover rate at that job. It's generally the same people you're always going to see. You're going to develop a rapport with them. And it's it's sort of comforting to have around, especially given the fact that like there there's always going to be the things that you will generally need there but not a whole ton of variety. Like, I know that the kind of bread that I generally like to eat and snack on is not going to be at Dollar General. I have to get that delivered from the grocery store. But they do have bread that's kind of brown, that markets itself as honey wheat, and I will willingly eat that, but not the white bread. And so they have something that's kind of like <laughs> what I generally eat. They also have... A number of other things that seem like they're put there solely to like make up the amount of calories that you will generally need in your diet but at the bare minimum like they'll have barbecue pork in the fridge a number of frozen foods and some canned items as well but it comes off as a little miscellaneous sometimes like not all the items directly fit with one another it feels almost as if they stocked it literally according to like what is the very basic amount that you're going to need if you are eating they'll have eggs they'll have milk even chocolate milk at one percent and a number of canned goods and so on but they're not going to have all of the fruits and and vegetables that you generally will want from the grocery store now they'll usually have some of those things in cans but you're going to have to go to the grocery store if you want to have like a really good diet not just cheap food that has the necessary calories protein minerals and so on but it's there for you and it's very comforting in a sense to be able to walk down there get the basics of what you need you can even get clothes and like some random dvds there uh batteries and and other necessary materials you might need uh, supplements and and basic hair care stuff as well you can borrow the baskets that they have at those stores hell you can even borrow the shopping carts that they have there like because you know the people that work at the store and 
by smiling and chatting them up a little bit, they'll have the vibe that you give off. And just based on that vibe, they'll be like, okay, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can take the shopping cart as long as you bring it back the next day. And they'll believe you when you say that you'll bring it back the next day. And usually people who do that do. It's interesting to me because I feel like I generally see the same people in that store as well. It's usually people who are on food stamps or they receive financial assistance of some kind, they look like they've walked there, or they're in cars that are kind of beaten down, kind of old. It's generally the same story. And while that isn't a good position to be in, and I think, you know, we should be getting people out of that position. It's the position that I've been in for a very long time. And so it I'm so used to it that there's almost a sense of like homeliness or comfort from seeing the 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 yellow label of the store going inside seeing the same items the same people and so on. But I do think the prevalence of Dollar General in particular is due to a larger phenomenon that I part of me has a problem with, and another part of me, due to this strange capitalistic attachment to this brand, have a problem with, but also don't have a problem with. And that's the death of general stores. Where I grew up initially, where I lived for the first 16 years of my life, there actually was a general store that you could walk to. You would have to walk, you know, off of our land and then down some grass. Eventually you would get to an actual sidewalk. You might have to jaywalk at a certain point, but there was a general store that had the basic food items you would need, milk and eggs, canned goods, and so on, and a few other things, and it was run locally by people who, who lived in the area, and you always saw those exact same people. It was a family each time you went in there. You developed a rapport with them, and it, it was locally owned. It didn't have the same commodified feeling that I find kind of comforting about these Dollar Generals. It was comforting in a different sense. And I do think that was better, simply because it was less commodified, even though the kind of rapport that I'm talking about is something you can also develop in, in these communities with Dollar General. That store closed, and there wasn't a general store for, I think, a, a year where I grew up there. And then all of a sudden, another one sprang up. This time it was owned by a group of Koreans that actually lived at the store. Like, you would walk in, and you would always see this Korean family, and then if you looked just a little bit, like, through this this doorway that didn't have a door on it, you could see beds in the other room and the stuff that their kids had. And I remember all of these people had like the thickest accents imaginable. I would I would come in and buy a soda with like change that I found in the sofa. And the woman who was behind the cash register, who was like the wife of the family in her almost exaggerated sounding like mangled accent would say, thank you, young boy. <laughs> like she didn't say like thank you young man or or um you know thanks kid or anything that would sound kind of normal it just sounded like the direct translation from uh, from korean for like thank you young boy no one says that but but she said that and it had personality to it and you know sometimes other members of the family would be behind the register or doing things at the store and the vibe the accents the way they would talk it was exactly the same and it was, you know, it was more comforting to see that because here was an immigrant family making a business for themselves, you know, uh, living um, by the, the business that they own and, and actually living in, in that business. It was, you know, they, they were pursuing the American dream of social mobility that is just really heavily, like, ingrained into us domestically and especially around the world with the image that we purport to other countries. It, it was, you know, comforting and inspiring, in a sense, to see that there at that store. And the white people who would sometimes be working at the store would literally just be volunteering because they liked the people at that store so much. They were not on the dole. They did not get paid. They, they just did it. And so they would go on grocery runs when the truck wouldn't come to this store. And they actually sold, resold groceries that they ran from the, the store uh, that they, were, they bought and, and brought in their car. 
which I'm pretty sure is illegal, but where I grew up nobody cared because it was so rural that people just wanted something within walking distance of their house or within a short drive because beyond that little store in that area, you would have to drive literally 40 minutes to get to the next grocery store. There was nothing. For 40 minutes, you had to drive all that way. And so that little store that used to actually be a bank that I grew up around, that, that was like feeding the neighborhood through uh, questionably legal uh, stocking methods and through the love of the community, essentially. I mean, people supported that store because they liked that Korean family. Even though they could barely communicate with us, there was, there was a sense of homeliness to it, of family to that business. And that's really only something you can get in very rural middle America. And in that sense, I do not like the prevalence of Dollar General and its contemporaries, which have encroached upon many of these communities with that exact business strategy. Hey, there's a lot of poor people here. There are people who cannot drive to a real grocery store. And so we're going to buy up the smaller businesses or the smaller businesses have gone out of business, they've disappeared, and we're, we're just going to invade these communities with that big yellow sign because there is nothing else here. And essentially, we're going to thrive off of the monopolization of, of this market. It's a little sad. It's a little sad not having that experience that I had when I was growing up where I would go into that small business with that family and, I, and you really did feel like they were pursuing their dream, their dream of living in the United States and making a life for themselves. I don't know where that family is now. That store was still there when I left that place. I don't know if it is still there now, and I frankly don't know what's happened to them, but if that community has been anything like this one, there probably is that big yellow sign right out the parking lot of that place where that family used to be.